I love it. Well, we are still in the High Growth Handbook by Elad, uh, Elad Gill, and we're talking about the role of the CEO. And one of the things that they're discussing here with and. Uh, Mark Andreessen is about delegating, especially if you're a first-time manager. There are four things that he talks about, and I, I want to unpack this just a little bit because I have a couple of ideas on it. Number one, if you are a first-time manager, he says, hire an experienced manager to run a team and watch how she does it. You will notice she probably tends to hold regular one-on-ones to stay in sync, while also trying to give the most rope to team members who run the most independently. The very best executives tend to be a combination of a router to other people for execution and end meetings with fewer no action items themselves, a strategist, and a problem solver. So, I have actually never done this. I have never actually hired a manager before and actually watched them manage. Now, have I been in peripheral meetings and peripheral conversations where I've seen managers that I've hired manage, I guess. Uh, but the culture that I generally type try to create is a culture where we're not really managing people. What we're focusing on is managing product, managing process. Because if you trust gr- good people and you hire great, competent, and capable, and autonomous self-starter people, then you never have to manage them. You merely have to direct them to what you want them to do. So I'm not the type of CEO, I'm not a CEO, guys. I mean, I'm barely a leader, not even. Um, could never claim that I am. But let's just say when I have hired people, when I've hired managers, and I just don't like that word. I just, I just think it's a, a, the wrong mental model and worldview to have. You shouldn't manage people. People don't need management. If they're good people, let that sink in. If they're good people, they don't need to be managed. You have worked with, or maybe you are, right? The type of individual, right? Who is a self-starter. They know what to do. And if they don't, they ask questions, right? And they're diligent and they're focused, right? You've met these people. They're hard workers. They get their shit done. And that's what you want, especially if you're building any type of organization. Now, obviously, as the organization scales, are you going to have to hire managers? Yes, but hopefully that will be so abstracted from you that it won't be won't be something that you have to necessarily do. But Mark Andreessen might disagree with me here. Number two, I really agree with. He says, for first time managers, it's all about trial and error. Try delegating and try again until it works. This will be part of any approach you take. You need to build some pattern recognition for when someone is starting to flail or when people have more slack in their time. This is a hard pill for me to swallow. And the reason this is a hard pill for me to swallow is because I've done so much trial and error through so many of my companies and startups and investments that I've made and, and you know, young bloods that I've invested time into and mentor and all that stuff. The trial and error hurts me the most because the reality is, is so much of life and business building is exactly that, that which you don't know, you uncover as you try it. And so it's the whole idea of you don't know what you don't know. And that's most of the game. And so I, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Whenever I listen to speakers and leaders and inspirational motivators or whatever you want to call them, who have a very tight and almost programmatic rubric for how to hire managers. It rubs me the wrong way. And the reason is, is because in all of my business building, in all of my different ventures, in all of my different partnerships, every single engagement is always different. And the reason is, is because people are different. They create different teams, different team cultures, different team dynamics different team aesthetics and idiosyncrasies. There's, and you really have to mold and meld that team and that unit together as they are having a rubric to try to force them into in some type of management process or management framework or management, you know, rubric, or it, it just doesn't work across a multiplicity of variable entities and variable experience. Now, if you're building a company and you're going to be working with them for 10, 15, 20 years, well, guess what? The rubric probably works within that culture because it's been codified, understood, as they said, pattern recognition, right? You get it. There's a, a an understanding across the enterprise as to that's how things operate within the walls of this company. But when it comes to startups, man, especially if you're a multi-founder, every single team 
Every single engagement, every single human is going to be different. And therefore, I believe that the trial and error thing is one of those things that we just have to live with. You can never get it perfectly right by design. You can get it right by molding and melding it to the right balance for that culture. See you on the track, my friends. Hammer down. <laughs>